Now it's time to talk some stocks. Jenny Horn is going to kick it off for us from the newsroom, taking a look at some cloud companies. DocuSign moving up after earnings. Jenny, seemed like the market's happy with some of their profitability figures. Yeah, Oliver, and I have to say, this move has been all over the place, even since yesterday after the close, because we initially saw shares surge as much as 14%, then to pair back a lot of those gains after the CEO and CFO did make statements regarding the fact they are seeing now some more moderate pipeline as well as cautious customer behavior coupled, coupled with smaller deal size and lower volumes. I mean, you can still see shares are up about 8 7.5% now on the session. So all things considered, still a really positive reaction to the fact that they did beat on their bottom line pretty substantially on an adjusted basis coming in around 72 cents per share, which also marked shares more than doubling from a year ago levels on revenue that did also exceed forecasts. So we are seeing the street react today pretty favorably. B of A raising its price target on DocuSign to $72 a share from 68 with a neutral rating. This, of course, follows this first quarter print where they highlighted billings upside from better execution on some of DocuSign's renewal deals. The analysts are arguing that new product launches like web forms, ID verification, and search could embed DocuSign offerings more meaningfully into enterprise customers through workflow and then help them fend off some of these competitive threats. They are looking for metrics, though, to bottom out before they can actually claim this is occurring, though, hence that neutral stance, and remain now on the sidelines until they see better visibility overall in the name. Another interesting note today was from Morgan Stanley, also raising its price target to $54 a share from 48, so a little bit less optimistic there with an underweight rating, and did note the company's really impressive first quarter upside that was partially offset by some implied weakness now in their second quarter guidance. So a mixed pick, I would say nothing was overwhelmingly outstanding from the analyst, but this is a name that definitely still sees favorability, and we still skew to the bullish side in terms of ratings, and it's interesting when you look at DocuSign's chart, because the name, at least through Thursday's close, was up about 5% this year. You zoom out, look at a 12-month base, it was down 35%, just not able to catch the love it once saw during the pandemic. This was one of those pandemic darlings, of course. Yeah, major pandemic hangover stock. Uh, but maybe cleaning up, you know, the bottom line is a step in the right direction. I think DocuSign, as far as like the product and the revenue goes, I know they're introducing you know, trying to introduce uh, some different avenues of revenue, but at the end of the day, not exactly a big moat that is around their product. So not sure there's going to be, you know, any big revenue blowout going forward, but they laid off people, they cleaned up the costs and uh, pretty much breaking even. So, you know, it doesn't show up in the long term chart, but at least in the short term, a little bit of relief. How about uh, we talk a little bit of what's coming down the pike. Adobe and the excitement around what artificial intelligence might bring to Photoshop. We're gonna we're not even gonna have to Photoshop anymore. We're just gonna like, click a button and Photoshop's gonna Photoshop for us. See, I don't think that will be the case. I was reading actually more into some of the offerings they unveiled at their EMEA 2023 summit, and I was seeing if anyone could just use Photoshop now, because actually I think one of their advantages, it's very difficult to learn some of the Adobe Creative Suite software. So for that reason, there's a stickiness because once you master, say, Adobe or Premiere, you're exactly. sort of then stuck using it. So I think that that would not be actually a good thing if anyone could just use AI to generate Photoshop, Ugh. but there is still somewhat of a creative process involved from what I could read, actually, but definitely some positivity we've seen this week as they have announced expanding their Firefly offerings. They're really focused on content creation and time where that's so key right now in this world. But Wells Fargo today upgrading shares to overweight from equal weight with a price target that's a new street high of $525 a share from 420 And the analyst said that the AI debate continues to drive shares of a Adobe. They expect much of the early value to accrue to established platforms, and they do see this potential for further breakout as products are now monetized. They also noted that the intensity of the competitive environment is moderating for Adobe, given that Firefly pre pre presents a much needed next act for the company and a natural extension of the entrenched position with digital media. He also said in an increasingly bifurcated market, he thinks that Adobe here stands out favorably given its profitability metrics 
as well as some of its valuation support just given the lift we've seen as of late with AI. He, we are seeing this name have an average rating of outperforming among analysts. Price targets really range in this name, all the way from $321 a share to now Wells price target at $525. So clearly implying some nice optimism from where we're currently trading just around $456 a share. This name was up over 30% on the year into Thursday's close and also seeing a nice green arrow today. So a name has definitely been somewhat resilient in the later half of this week. Okay, really uh, making its move now. Doesn't want to get left behind uh, in this uh, thematic run up. So uh, it took a little bit, but it kicked into gear. And now we got to live up to the expectations on earnings. So gonna have to give us a pretty good guidance, seems like. And let's get bold up. Thank you very much, Jenny Horn.